All right, I want to do a, uh, a quick video here, just a simple um, order of operations uh, mathematics example uh, that I've got here. And uh, it's one that sometimes shows up on the internet. There's quite a few of these that show up uh, on Facebook. And uh, just wanted to run, run through this one really quick. Uh, we've got here is 23 minus, and then in parentheses, 3 plus 13. All right, so um, now these math examples pop up from time to time on Facebook and elsewhere and uh, generate a lot of different answers from people. Um, order of operations, uh, it's a convention, really. I probably shouldn't refer to it as a rule, but it's a convention that's been really agreed upon over uh, uh, the last few hundred years. And uh, um, the thing about this convention is it's um, a way so that people will get the same answer no matter where they are in the world. And uh, this convention applies whether or not you have parentheses in the problem. You know, this example is fairly simple. We've got parentheses, but if there are no parentheses, then next you would look for exponents. If there's no exponents, you look for multiplication and division. Uh, then you would look for addition or subtraction. Um, so the basically four steps to this convention. Um, you first would solve anything that's in parentheses. Um, some English-speaking countries, they refer to the parentheses as brackets. I guess they use brackets. Uh, uh, number two, you would solve any exponents that you have in your equation. Um, then multiplication and division would be solved left to right. Uh, you have to remember multiplication and division have equal precedence. And then uh, finally, number four, addition or subtraction would be solved left to right. Addition and subtraction also have equal precedence. Um, people get confused. I want to spend a little bit of time talking about order of operations. A lot of people get confused over the precedence of multiplication and division. Uh, multiplication and division, again, they have equal precedence and they're simply solved from left to right in the order that they're found. Uh, multiplication and division are really the same operation. Um, division is the multiplication of the inverse of a number. Um, the same is true, you know, we're looking at addition and subtraction. Addition and subtraction also have equal precedence, and they're solved from left to right in the order that they're found in the problem. Um, some people have seen uh, PEMDAS. Uh, it's a uh, mnemonic that's used to try to memorize the uh, order of operations. Uh, there's also some other ones. There's BODMAS and BEDMAS and BIDMAS. Um, they're all different mnemonics depending on what English-speaking country you're from. And um, all those mnemonics really represent the same order of operations convention. So, um, you know, PEMDAS for example, could be written as Pedmas or Pedmasa, etc. And um, it's really why the mnemonics, oftentimes they confuse people more than they help, uh, because what happens often is people memorize the order of six letters and they don't really memorize how order of operations actually works. You'll have people who memorize PEMDAS and they'll claim uh, to no end that multiplication is done before division. And then you'll have people that learn BEDMAS or BODMAS, and they'll tell you that division is always done before multiplication. And the only reason they do that is because they memorize the order of six letters. But they don't understand that multiplication and division are really the same operation. And the same thing's true with addition and subtraction. It's the same thing. You know, subtraction is just the addition of a negative number. Uh, there's really no difference. Um, so you have to think of it that way. I, I really don't like the mnemonics. I don't even like the acronyms like, you know, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally and so on, uh, because I think it just simplifies the memorization too much. Um, another common fallacy with order of operations is a lot of people believe that if there are no parentheses, you just solve left to right, uh, which is not true at all. Um, I see that posted a lot. People will say, well, yeah, back in my day, whenever you didn't have parentheses, you just solved it left to right. 
Well, that's ignoring the convention. You have four steps in order of operations regardless. If you don't have parentheses, then you look at exponents. If you don't have exponents, then you look at your multiplication and division. So even if you don't have any parentheses, you're still going to solve your multiplication and division in the order that you find them left to right. That's just how it works. That's how it's always worked. That's how it's always worked in anybody's lifetime. So if somebody tells you that back in their day it was something else, uh, they most likely uh, <clears throat> are suffering from the Mandela effect. They, it's not something that's true. You know, they might think that's what they learned, but they really didn't. And I have yet to find anybody who can show me a textbook that teaches that, because there aren't any. You won't find it. So anyhow, uh, getting back to this example here, we've got 23 minus, and then in parentheses, 3 plus 13. So uh, the way you solve this is you solve what's inside the parentheses first. So the first thing is 3 plus 13 equals 16. Uh, and then you've got to remember that the minus sign is applicable to the solution that's inside the parentheses. I've seen people screw up these signs too. They get really confused over how those are applied. Um, so really what you're ending up with here is you have 23 minus 16 equals 7. And that would be your answer. <clears throat> now, I got a second example here. This one doesn't have any parentheses at all. It's 7 plus 4 times 4 minus 10 equals. Uh, this is another problem that confuses a lot of people because it doesn't have any parentheses. Um, you can dumb these problems down. Um, the lack of parentheses doesn't change the, the need for order of operations. So, um, you can dumb this problem down because people will get confused when you start mixing multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. So, as I said before, multiplication is just shorthand for addition. Multiplication is repeated addition. So, you can take this problem, see where you have the multiplication in the middle, the 4 times 4. There's nothing wrong with rewriting this as 7 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4 minus 10. Now, there's a reason why we don't do that, because it would take a lot of paper to keep writing that out. That's why we have a shorthand of multiplication. Much easier to write 4 times 4 than 4 plus 4 plus 4 plus 4. But you can see that what I've done is I've, I've, I've converted this problem. So already you can see if we simply went left to right and ignored the order of operations, we would have ended up with something like this, 7 plus 4 times 4 minus 10, well, you would, some people would add 7 plus 4 and get 11, then to multiply it by 4 and subtract 10, you'd end up with 34, which is completely wrong. We ignored the shorthand for addition. If you solve left to right, you're ignoring the shorthand that comes from multiplication. You're ignoring the precedence of multiplication. So, uh, like I said, if you want to dumb the problem down, get rid of the multiplication and just use addition and subtraction. And you'll end up with 13. Um, so this is really why you can't ignore the order of operations rules. They're put, in, or, or convention, I should say. Um, it's a convention that's been agreed upon. I mean, this all got started back in the 16th century. So it's nothing new. It's not common core. It's not new math. Uh, it's none of that. You know, it's uh, this has been around for a very long time. Um, I can pull out textbooks from the 1800s early 1900s and this is this still applies so um, you know people who ignore order of operations they just think they're doing what comes natural by solving left to right but uh, but they're ignoring the precedence uh, that comes through the convention of order of operations so um, you know really in order to get 34 you know, you would, you would in this example, you would have to change, you'd actually have to add parentheses to the problem in order to do that. Uh, so if you were going to add 7 plus 4, you could see down here in the middle, you would actually have to put 7 and plus 4 in parentheses to get 11, and then take that multiplied by 4 and get 44, and then subtract 10. So, but this is a completely different problem than the original problem. Adding parentheses like that changes the order of operations. And so the only way to actually get 34 would be to add these parentheses in. 
So I hope, hope this example helps. I'm going to try to add some more videos as I go. Um, right now, this is just a, you know, this channel is just really early. It's very low budget. I'm creating this stuff in Publisher, uh, well, or PowerPoint for the most part, very cheap, uh, very simple slides. I don't have any high tech graphics, anything like that. Um, and, and so far, I have to keep my videos under 15 minutes and until I perhaps maybe grow this thing. I, I don't know if I will or not. I'm just doing this for fun, really. Um, I'm doing this more for education. I'm not doing this to, you know, uh, uh, for any other reason than to try to help people who have forgotten how order of operations work or somebody who's new at this. Uh, just really want to give them a background, give them some reasoning for why things are the way they are. So, again, I hope this has been helpful and um, look forward to your comments. Thank you.